Hey, YouTubers. Anybody that's got a relationship with God knows that he's uh, got an interesting way of sending messages sometimes. Uh, he'll speak to you through random things um, or, you know, do little things in your day to kind of remind you he's there. Well, I thought this was interesting. Um, we've seen in the past where God has spoken through lotto numbers. The, uh, the day after Obama was elected, the Illinois lottery came up. Uh, for the pick three, the numbers were 666. Six, six. Six, six. Six, six. It's just funny that something like that came up. And, you know, it's hard to say that's coincidence. Uh, I'm not saying Obama's the Antichrist, but he is an Antichrist for sure. Uh, you can look just because of his policies of, uh, you know, uh, gay rights and abortion and all kinds of things. So, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but uh, on, what day was it? I think April 3rd. I think it was the, yeah, the day before Easter, uh, or Resurrection Day, as I would prefer to call it. The day before Resurrection Day, the Philadelphia Lottery came up. Uh, it was the Mega Millions, and it came up as 7777. Uh for a total value of 7.77 million the uh there were so many people that hit that number i think it was somewhere around 1300 people there were so many people that hit that number the uh the lottery actually lost i think a thousand percent of their winnings like they had to pay out way more than they took in uh now you look at that and you see all those sevens and you're like, well, what does seven mean? Uh, a lot of people connect that to uh, God and completion and things like that. Uh, but what I saw was, uh, I, I saw this connection that somebody else made, so I'm not going to take their credit. I'll uh, credit them at the end of the video. But all those sevens, where was that, uh, where was that lottery hit? Philadelphia. Where... In the Bible <laughs> is Philadelphia mentioned. Only one place, and that's Revelation. So let me do some reading here for you. Revelation 3, verse 7. This is uh, New King James. Hope, uh, nobody, hope nobody gets it all bent out of shape because I'm not reading King James. But And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set a door before. Uh, see, sorry. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test who dwell on the earth. Pay special attention to that verse there. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I shouldn't have closed that. <laughs> Now, uh, <clears throat> take a look here again at uh, verse 10 and 11. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Now, I believe what he's saying here is that you need to persevere and not become part of this great falling away because there's so many people falling away to false doctrines, false teachers, and, uh, you know, gods that they invent in their own mind, you know, the kind of God that would throw people in hell or, you know, the kind of God that uh, 
forgives everything regardless of what what you're doing you know if you're in the bar oh he forgives that you know if you're uh living with your girlfriend in an adulterous relationship oh he forgives that you know that's uh that's not persevering that's uh that's falling into the ways of the world and the ways of sin and uh you need to repent of those things if that's something you're engaged in uh drinking fornication adultery um all those things but again he says here i will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world i'm a pre-tribber i know a lot of my subscribers are pre-tribbers i'd like to see how a post-tribber is going to tell you that he's going to keep you from the hour of trial he doesn't say i'm going to set you off to the side and protect you during the hour of trial i'm going to keep you from the hour of trial Hold fast that no one take your crown. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't studied crowns very well, but you know, there's a, I think it's the crown of life for those that are watching for the Lord's return. I personally would like to get that one. So I'm keeping my eyes on the skies because Jesus is coming, brothers and sisters. That is a fact. Um, it's just funny that God speaks in these little ways and uh, now is not the time to be falling off. Uh, now is not the time to be uh, following the world. Um, we need to keep our eyes on heaven and uh, heavenly treasure and uh, saving souls. You know, work while it's day, for when night cometh, no man can work. That hour is very quickly approaching. So, uh, just something interesting I saw on the news. I'll credit the guy that uh, showed me the idea about Philadelphia, but... If you are not a believer, if you are not a born-again Christian, so many people can call themselves Christian. I, I suppose even, I don't know, 60, 70 or more percent of Americans call themselves Christians. But the Bible says you must be born again to enter heaven. Do you know that you're born again? Do you have the Spirit of God living inside of you? There's only one way to gain that, and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for your sins because we're all sinners deserving death. We all deserve to go to hell. No one deserves to go to heaven. I don't care how good you think you are. And uh, you say you're a good person. You haven't murdered anybody. The Bible says that he who hates his brother has uh, committed murder. So no one's good. Not a single one. Repent and believe that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior. We just celebrated his uh, his day of resurrection, so it should still be fresh in your mind. Just think about um, if you died today, are you going to heaven? Uh, a lot of people just uh, get caught back up in the distractions of the world and don't let that thought sink in. So seriously think on that. Think about uh, what <laughs> what you could do better as a Christian, whether it's repenting, witnessing, or just uh, nurturing your relationship with Jesus Christ. Something I need to work on myself. Uh, I'm not excluding myself from this. So, repent and believe. There is no, under, no other name under heaven by which men must be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. So, until next time, see you later.